your kind words. Now with great excitement, I would like to welcome our first personality for the e-summit day one, Dr. Zahid Ashraf, a fellow at the National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad, Indian Academy of Science, Bangalore, a benign member at National Academy of Medical Sciences. Under his supervision, extensive research has been conducted in the domain of biosciences, such as high altitude biology, among many others. Dr. Ashraf has many accolades under his belt, the Ram Chandra National uh, the Ram uh, Basanti Devi Amirchand Award by ICMR in 2018, as well as the Innovations Award by the Cleveland Clinic Foundation in 2008. Dr. Zahid is also an invited member at Pulmonary Vascular Research Institute, United Kingdom. He has developed various patents, one of them being a method of risk assessment of fluid formation. Sir has achieved several honors researches, collaborative projects, and patents that we might run short of time if those are called and counted. So we are delighted to have you here with us today. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Zahid Ashraf. Thank you, Nana, for your wonderful words. And are you able to see my Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible? And then, are you able to see me? Hello. Hi. Life coming full circle. Now you are the head of the biotech division of your alma mater, which came into existence after graduation. What major differences have you noticed in the field of education and studies since then? So you are trying to ask the question that uh, when I was a student, if I'm not wrong, uh, what kind of changes have taken place in the education system, correct? Yes, sir. So the what I would say that if you look into holistically in a different areas, several new areas has emerged, which were not in our case initially, I have taken admission in Botany in Delhi University. And then you see, so my time that was in the beginning, it was more on a traditional subject, now it's a uh, entrepreneurship or what we call innovation innovation based collective learning social learning interactive learning so the whole plethora of new things has come and the whole pattern of teachings have also changed so i say is that more if you look from the scientific angle the technology has taken a big leap and a lot of other like eventually which will result into a new development change in the society societal challenges those things have taken a center stage as opposed to what we were when we were a student, we were more into traditional zoology, botany, taxonomy, all those kind of things. Yes, Nana, go ahead. Hello. Are you able to hear me? Hello, I'm audible. In the meantime, I'm really sorry for this online thing. You know, I just wanted to come in person and then anytime interact with the students remains our biggest, you know, energy too. As Principal Saab, I was listening to his talk also. You know, we equally teachers, we feel uh, students are part of our, you know, family and extension of our, uh, you know, desire, our hope, our dreams. So I would say the teachers are the happiest persons once you achieve, once you do something or some achieve some milestone in life. And I personally feel the same way, you know, agitated by getting into this online, offline, these all things. But unfortunately, because of back-to-back -back commitments, I could not come, but I would love to come, if, you know, as a interact with a student anytime any for anything so nana if you have uh, questions or any other can interact
Yeah, you can put me the question in the meantime. I like, I can. Yes, sir. So yeah. my next question is to you. Is, yeah. As we all know, the the pandemic has wreaked havoc on the world economy and exposed the grim reality of our healthcare system effectiveness. Sir, could you kindly describe the many problems the biosciences have faced as a result of COVID nineteen pandemic, and what kind of rapid changes has the biotechnology industry witnessed in time? so i would say there are two parts to my answer that the first thing is that one must appreciate and you all should be proud that the the way science has progressed the way biotechnology mainly biotechnology of the medical sciences has taken lead within a one month we almost like you know the first pandemic covid was somehow leaked in from china in somewhere like you know around 25th of december 20, 2019 and within i would say one and half month every almost especially india we had uh, diagnostic test available diagnostic kits available so which is a phenomenal from any extent you know it takes ages to identify disease identify look into their um, uh, detection method look into their diagnostic procedure but hats off to the scientific developments that we were able to get the diagnosis test done almost within from january february you know february onwards india also had lot of testing center based on rt pcr and other methods the second biggest strength again to go by you know that has been again a phenomenal thing is then within one year of this pandemic the industry or the scientists were available or scientists were ready with the vaccine which generally takes like you know decades to develop a specific vaccine again so and then the third thing which go more on a classical i would say strong on the scientific side is that within two months we were able to detect the genome sequence of the what your story we every day listening is the this variants delta variants gamma variants you know uh, no omicron all those things have detection of this has been possible for the again phenomenal technology is developed by the scientist over the years to identify or to detect the specific changes or the even the and these variants are i think these are not like you know there may be just 0.001% change between these strains so there are three major positive side of three major uh, i would say take home messages of investing in science and technology has been that we were ready to diagnose within a month we, we were able to sequence it within three months and within one year the vaccine was ready back the scientists and the in collaboration with industry they were able to develop a vaccine so the other thing what you the second question of your second part of your question was that you know suddenly we feel that we are helpless in a sense and the other thing is that there are two yes, three sir. things one thing is that what it has shown in the pandemic is not like once instantly going something happening which was not this like if you're looking for the half of the thing was based on the infrastructure based right the challenges what we had the hospital admission the test done in time the oxygen availability and also again one must assert that this is not like you know overnight things could be changed but the policy makers the government academy academia and the future generations you know they should invest heavily on the health sector so that if god for it this kind of challenge comes in coming times we are able we are prepared for it so that the the major portion of major challenges what were biotechnologists or the clinician or the industry has faced in infrastructure based i would say the second is that if you you know the again i would say is that still there are two kind of debate is that one debate what people say is that there is no cure available you know you are still you don't have direct medication apart from vaccination is the prevention i would say right the flip side of it is that it whatever was available and what the scientists and the clinicians and the, i would equally in whenever it goes uh, without saying the industry pharma industry mainly they were available to provide or repropose the uses of already existing drugs so people tried 
you know, different combination, different combinations of antibiotic, zinc, all those combination, you know, uh, remsedivir, RNA attacking drugs or multiple things. So there are two things is that, yes, within one to two years, it's very difficult to come up with a direct uh, therapy or direct uh, medicine. But at the same time, people were able to understand provide some sort of release based on the various combination of various drugs existing in the uh, available in the, in their hand or in the market the challenges it has posed a phenomenal i mean the magnitude of pandemic was beyond anybody's i mean even developed country has suffered so heavily so all infrastructure healthcare system has been challenged and has been challenged to a limit where it's very difficult to you know Scatter are very difficult to handle such a high volume, all critical care patients. So they need to be relooked into it, and then they need to have long term investment in the healthcare system. Yes. When I'm. Thank what, you so much, sir, for great insight. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So my next question is to you is. Globally, India is among the top 12 destinations of biotechnology and the third largest in the Asia-Pacific region. The industry amount amounted to $63 billion in 2019 and is forecast to reach $150 billion by 2025. Despite this fact, the GDP share of science and innovation infrastructure is below 1% as compared to other scientifically advanced countries like US, Japan, South Korea, etc. So, if this scenario remains unchanged, do you think we will be able to compete in the global market? So, fantastic question. That's exactly it will be tripled in the coming times. And but the if you look from the technical point, there are two things: is that the triply the major component of 54 billion that also covers the pharma industry, and we have we have done phenomenally well, and then. We should be proud of among very few countries in the world who were able to make their own vaccine. And co-vaccine has been finally approved by WHO and recommended by UN. So that makes it a proud that yes, we were among the leagues of developed nation, like you know US, UK, Germany, those kind of uh, big uh, developed nation. That India among the emerging world turned out to be most uh, low. Uh, I would say the, the it has shown its potential and the promise among emerging markets and emerging worlds. Now the second part of the question is very critical. That is still, despite all those things, what we have or what we is a, we in, invest very poorly on the um, healthcare or the medical system or so. There are two components. First of all, was awareness, and I hope after this pandemic, the government and all, you know, this is not like government is somewhat no different. It's a reflection of the society. So overall, industry, private partners, hospitals, you know, pri private hospitals, the pharma industry, biotech industry, these all has to also contribute to the, to, to the towards the development of new, you know, healthcare based or economy or healthcare uh, based uh, industry which uh, they should have like you know a specialized uh, a specific economical zones for the development drug development and r d the major limitation not only that society per se does not understand the importance of research and development you see again i getting back to the vaccine development story the first time pfizer developed rna based vaccine i hope you guys are if you want me to explain this technical point i can explain but i'm just taking on the face value that you all understand dna based rna based vaccine which was pfizer vaccines and the moderna vaccines which were the two which i think india those were not imported in india because of it was maintained in the minus 80 chain it, it needs minus uh, 80 degrees Celsius for maintaining the functionality. So my point was that this Pfizer, that uh, Moderna vaccine as well as Pfizer, they were in the pipeline for ages. Or for they were developing these technology. They were working on this technology for the vaccine against cancer for almost 15 years. So. As a youngster, what I would say is that rather rather we all being on the critical side, education overall budget is also not that very impressive. 
to compare with the developed world. So the, we need to educate, we need to make the awareness of good health, preventive care, you know, happy lifestyles, and the infrastructure requirement for the country, for the society. So I hope after this, the government will increase the budget and then the uh, I think industry and the private partners will also come forward for India to be remaining in a major superpower in the pharma industry and in the biotech industry. So it's a collective effort has to be done and at the same time make admission universities, students, colleges, they also has to do a small, a small contribute in a terms of a small, a small innovation and research so that society is able to believe that yes, <coughs> excuse me, yes, these kids, these college uh, students, they are able to make or use, develop some technology which makes their life easy, which detects uh, the disease at early, they, which which helps the society, let's see, for predicting weather, for agricultural yield. I can go on and on for pollution uh, remediation. So I think it's a both the way is that, yes, it's very less, but I'm hopeful that we are realizing our intellectual potential or scientific potential and not only government private players will also contribute and we will i'm sure we will emerge as a top player not only third is a just pause but the way post covid and the during covid also our uh, industry and then scientists have shown that we are hopeful that we will be competing or we will at least part with the western world Thank you so much, sir, for your inspiring words. Now, firstly, I would like to thank you, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule and steering our minds in the right direction. We are delighted to have you today with us. It was certainly a, a great start to the event. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. for, And I must uh, especially thank Garv for all his efforts. I'm really sorry that uh, I could not come in person, but... Uh, I will be available online, offline, I mean, online for any suggestions or anything you want to do. Last thing, I just want to say that uh, for the, since you all, most of you are that uh, commerce student, government has a lot of initiatives, okay, for your future, for those, uh, that is a major component, I am think, being teacher, we always wish that our students they will do good. So if you have five minutes time, I'll slightly emphasize on that. Is okay with you, Nana? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So if you want to really invest, really invest your career or of biotechnology as a career, as a goal. So apart from the science student who keep on doing, who is doing, who are doing either, you know, learning, but there are two components, learning and earning. And if you want to choose biotechnology for the earning purpose. So there are multiple avenues where you can explore for. And one of the major like Principal Saab has also mentioned about the incubation center, Atal Incubation Center in JNU. We are also working on the, on, in our university for the incubation center. And I was deeply involved in their committee also, what was when they have uh, you know, formulated the incubation center at JNU also. So I have some insight information about those. If you want to really know, I can answer. But what I'm saying is that, one of the major website or one of the major portal or venue for getting all the information for the student would be to look into the BIRAC website, B-I-R-A-C, is that Biotechnology Research in Industry Research Council. So it provides all possible sorts of incentive, fellowships, innovation, small startup grants. They have three, four very uh, good programs for the youngsters, what we call EUVA one program the second is that sitare that's also they give fellowship and they <coughs> excuse me they attach you for with the industry and they can attach you with the academics which who, who are developing various kind of products like iits um, and other research institutes and then they have uh, and the third program is big big which is also very young oriented so these all uh, are the government scheme and the policies where you can, even if you don't have biotechnology background, but if you have entrepreneurial skill, you have innovative thoughts, you can approach BIREC and then you can 
like sitare one or two students from our college got last year and they were able to go work with the, some industry and then one student they went to so they they all like you know they were developing some kit for detection of sugar level which uh, like app for so the students they contribute the, the other it guys they were working they're looking into pigmentation the color of the skin and then detection of certain disease certain forms of cancer using the app uh, cell phone so india being a you know growing emerging economy and the technology hub we have a lot of uh, potential i would request all those who are listening i think they should able to grab this government's initiative uh, the government's another government's website is also funded by DB Department of Biotechnology is SBRIEI means a small business industry research in initiatives of the government then BIPs are also BIPPs are that biotechnology industry partnership programs so you can look into these kind of government aided or government funded uh, uh, initiatives so that you can start or you can build up your career in the in the area of biotechnology and the last thing since in the introduction you said so many things about the fellows and i'm being a fellow of national academies what the indian academy of science national academy of science and indian national science academies what they do they pick they are uh, they put up the advertisement for internship and these are the paid internship uh, uh, for six months, one year, and then you can be connected. And then your background does not have to be completely biotechnology or biological. They encourage, you know, the, the students who have some skills or something they want to learn in from biotechnology or they want to learn from some industry. So the point remains that if you're doing in this internship, you can obviously do in the some corporate uh, setup also, but at the same time, you can do some internship in uh, with the academician, with the biotechnology labs where they do R&D, and then you can, then the idea remains that you, the, the students who are coming from diversified field, they will get an idea of science and then importance of science, importance of R&D so that they can contribute and then tomorrow they can independently develop something for the society. Now, now over from my side, I think I have uh, taken five extra minutes, but I guess it was worth. Thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us. Yeah. So, <clears throat> thank you again. And then, yes, sir, thank you so much. So I should log off now or uh, how it will work? Done? If any, any, so Nana, the other equipment, I have, I can spare another five to ten minutes. I want people from the audience to ask natural question. You say yes, they can ask me anything. That will be the more exciting outcome of my talk. Any of your classmates, any of your juniors, seniors, they want to know something, they want to ask me something. Another two to three minutes. Nena, koi hai? Is anybody interested in asking or getting engaged, involved in? They can ask me any question. Yes, sir. So I would like to ask one question to you. Uh, you sir, yeah, please. How go much ahead. do you believe? How much do you believe biotechnology has to offer towards the Ask Nidbar Bharat vision of the current government? to build a strong research and transnational ecosystem across the country. So there are two government policies. I'll not get into that different forte, but I would say that, that biotechnology independently are making India among the, you already mentioned, among the third major industry. So it is helping overall India to be the Atmanivar by itself, regardless of uh, that towards achieving a total 100% self-reliance in all biotechnology and medical research related product. We need to go far, we need to go, we need to, you know, what do you say, walk a long way before we, we become complete autonomous and then independent, I would say, not sorry, autonomous, not the right term, independent by generating every avenues by our own self and there are few areas which requires very heavy investment. 
you see medical equipments are mainly if you go anywhere any hospital any diagnostic center they have ge flip siemens these are the major, major giant all over the world so we need to have a heavy investment in the biotech industry or the bioengineering industry and the same time we need to somehow develop our own you know cost effective affordable healthcare system where we should be able to deal uh, disease specific issue healthcare specific issue infrastructure in our own way so eventually that's the goal in coming 10 10 years coming decade or so we should be seen as a almost self reliance we are already very much covid has uh, the positive side of covid has that it has uh, jumped all uh, or it has given us a stimulus or the opportunity to pull all our resources which could have taken or testing our resources and coming different technologies together no convergence technology means engineers as well geo scientists as well mechanical engineers as well electronics as well towards a solving a biological system biological issue or the health related issue so the covid has already pushed us and then the vaccine development on top of that and especially indigenous uh, vaccine development so the covid has already has given 5 10 years jump which has taken almost a decade in normal times in 1 to 2 years what we have achieved Finally, I would like to thank you, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule. We are delighted to have you uh, uh, with us today, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Much, sir. Thank you. Then I'll just take a leave. Okay, thanks again for all your patience hearing, and I hope uh, we'll see sometime. Okay, then bye. Thank you very much, sir.